uh, and some some will find some of the um, some of your analysis on Nigerian leaders here a bit controversial, depending on which side of the divide that you are in. Tell me a bit about that experience in writing this and what drove you in that direction. Well, I think controversy is not necessarily a bad thing when it comes to leaders because people have different ideas. But, for example, General Sonia Bacha, I had done my doctoral studies in Oxford on the ECOMOG intervention in Liberia and I've done a lot of subsequent work on Nigeria's role in Sierra Leone as well. And so from that, I gleaned uh, a lot of my information on someone like General Sonia Bacha. And he's a fascinating figure in the sense that at home, he was brutal, he was autocratic, but he also co-opted a feckless political class in Nigeria. And even though his domestic, pop, uh, his domestic kind of reputation will not recover, he wouldn't be considered, <laughs> especially I haven't even talked about the widespread corruption, mm -hmm. you know, looting $2 billion from the central bank and having it carried away in trucks. That is something that we'd never seen before. But I make the point that in the area of foreign policy, mm -hmm. Sonia Bacha led a lot of the peacekeeping efforts in both Liberia and Sierra Leone that ended civil wars in both countries at the cost of maybe over 700 Nigerian peacekeepers. And so I make the point that in the area of foreign policy, his reputation will at least be better than in the domestic yeah, arena. Yeah, yeah. So just one example of what led me to focus on that biographical sketch. And you wrote quite a lot on um, Olusha Gomba Sanjo here um, in, in terms of the roles he played in bridging that um, Nigeria-South Africa relationship. Yes, I think the golden age of the relationship between Nigeria and South Africa were the years when Olusha Gomba Sanjo and South African President Thabo Mbeki were in power between 1999 and 2007. And I think they achieved quite a bit for Africa in that they embarked on peacekeeping and peacemaking in places like Liberia and Dafur in Sudan and in Zimbabwe and in Burundi and DRC in the case of South Africa. And they also helped to build some of the institutions of the African Union like NEPAD and the African Peer Review Mechanism, etc. Many of them are now fledgling under-resourced, donor-dependent, so they haven't necessarily been sustainable institutions. But I think it was an era which showed the potential of the cooperation between both countries. And it was a bit tensed under President Jonathan's government, you wrote here. Yes. That's correct? Yes. I mean, I think under good luck, Jonathan, the relationship wasn't really in a very good or strong place. South Africa and Nigeria disagreed over conflict situations like Guinea-Bissau and Côte d'Ivoire and Libya, how to handle the aftermath of Gaddafi's assassination after the NATO-led intervention in 2011. And the Binational Commission, which had been established under the era of Abbas and Joan Mbeki, did not meet for quite a few years and there was a sense that Angola rather than Nigeria had become South Africa's strategic partner during that period. So there were quite a few tensions during that yeah. period. And one other thing I should mention is that 125 Nigerians were expelled from South Africa for allegedly having fake yellow fever certificates. And in retaliation, Nigeria expelled a train load of South Africans, 78 of them, uh, as a result. So that just underlines and shows some of the tensions. Professor Debajo, nice to have you on Channels Book Club. We could go on and on here, but we don't have too much time. Congrats on your book. Thank you. Thanks Thank you coming. very much. Thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah.